You collect a pack dot for 10 points. You break a brick in Super Mario Bros. for 50 points. You jump over a barrel in Donkey Kong for 100 points. You destroy a tank in Battle Zone for 1,000 points. Each one of these examples is the lowest amount of points the game can give, and every other point value the game can give is divisible by this lowest point value. So the lowest point value is also the greatest common factor. For example, in Pac-Man, each one of the point values is divisible by 10. So therefore, if we divide every value of the Pac-Man scores by 10, we end up getting rid of a zero off every single score and nothing changes. We can do the same thing for the next three games but using the values 50, 100, and 1000. Because video games opt to use such high point values, in a majority of video games when you're playing, there will be a zero at the end of the score that will never change. Never change. Never change. Always the same. So the only purpose of this zero at the end of the score is to inflate the point values to seem 10 times higher. If you look at a different type of game, like sports games or board games, they usually make the point system to be as simple as possible. And the greatest common factor for these point systems is almost always one. Video games, on the other hand, go out of their way to use higher point values when they really aren't needed. Although the purpose of points in most games is to tell who's winning over the other player or team. In video games, this very well still could be the case, but in majority of cases, it's to see who has the highest score or there might be an extra life system or other things incorporated into the points. Let's look into the history of video game scores and see why they decided to have these inflated numbers in the first place. The first example of scoring in video games was in 1972 with Pong. Pong had a simple scoring system where you got a point for scoring a goal, so it has a GCF of 1. In 1975, Gunfight was released and it also had the same point-by-point -point scoring system. Highway also had a scoring system where the points went up by one. Crash and Score contained many different point values, but there was a one on the board, so the greatest common factor of this one is one. Death Race, Blockade, and Night Driver all came out in 1976 and all had a single point scoring system. Next is Breakout and Canyon Bomber. These games have different point values you can collect, but the lowest for each game is one. Now for Space Invaders, and in my opinion, this is the most influential game ever for influencing point values. Any points that you can obtain in Space Invaders is a multiple of 10. Space Invaders was one of the first video games to popularize high scores. Also, it was genuinely just a huge hit, being one of the most popular arcade games of all time. The next year, in 1979, Asteroids came out. It seems like they were trying to one-up Space Invaders, because Asteroids lowest point value is 20. The greatest common factor in this game is still 10 though, because not every score value is divisible by 20. And when Galaxian came out, the lowest point value was 30. In 1980, Stratovox came out, which had the lowest point value and greatest common factor of 50. And finally, Battle Zones, where all the point values were multiples of 1000. So overall, why do video games give you so many points? I think when video games are being made, their logic was the more points the better. Having a high score of 50,000 sounds better than having a high score of 5,000. Another reason why I think video games have such complicated score systems, in board games or sports games, usually the players have to keep track of the score. Therefore, the simplest scoring system should almost always be implemented. But in video games, however, the computers keep track of the score. So therefore, a more complicated scoring system doesn't hinder the player that much. And when arcade games were becoming big in the 1970s, video games were trying to one-up each other by giving more points than the previous games. And this video game trope that was made in the 1970s is still being used a lot today in video games. Almost every game that is even the least bit arcade-inspired will almost always have scores in the multiple of tens. So that is why video game scores are so high. If you guys have any thoughts or opinions on this, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. And one thing I did include in this video, but I think is worth mentioning is pinball machines, because pinball machines famously have really high scores too. Thank you guys for checking out the video. If you could leave a like or maybe consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. And I hope that you all have a great day.